my son was diagnosed with ADHD and autism. And I was set on a mission to find out as much about um, both as I could, but I landed on ADHD a lot more. And that's purely because as I started reading about it, um, I realized that I was reading about me and my life as not only as a child, but also as an adult. And that really piqued my interest. So I ended up switching my reading and research to adults with ADHD because I didn't know it was a thing in adults. Um, and it just set off this massive, um, yeah, as I said, research and reading and I thought, okay, I need to look into this a bit more. So I went to um, get assessed and eventually I got diagnosed with ADHD and I just, I could not believe that I was living with this thing that I didn't even know could be a thing in adults. And, and so. tell us, like, what was it that surprised you when you were reading about adult ADHD? What stood out to you? Um, just the things that I thought were things that were wrong with me, to be quite frank and honest with you. Yeah. Um, the, you know, I struggled holding down a job for, you know, more than a year or two. I procrastinated all the time. My energy was very up and down, anger outbursts. Um, I struggled a lot with um, postnatal anxiety as well. And it was just all those little things that I just assumed were just things that were wrong with me. I just, I couldn't seem to fix them. Um, so it was those things that when I started reading about them, that that was part of ADHD, I was like, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. <laughs> I just have ADHD. So once I sort of started learning about it and realized that there were things that he just couldn't do himself without being asked quite a few times. Um, and even for myself, you know, after I was diagnosed, I was like, well, now I know why I'm struggling to do things of the morning. You know, sometimes I'd forget to pack the school lunches until, you know, five minutes before we're out the door. Um, so it really took some, some learning and some guidance um, from what I was reading. And I quickly realized that a stress-free morning starts the night before. So I don't do a whole lot the night before. I know a lot of parents do. They'll do lunches the night before or things like that. But I at least do, um, you know, just check that things are ready for the morning. So we've got school uniforms. Um, we know where the shoes are because often we've lost our shoes in the morning and that adds 15 minutes. Um, so we know where the shoes are. There's a, um, there's a, a fresh clean lunch box ready to go. All that kind of stuff that at least I know when I get up in the morning that that's already there. I don't need to wash anything. I don't need to start finding things, things like that. Um, so that definitely helps the night before. And then getting up in the morning is, you know, just getting up that little bit earlier for me. I make sure that I have some time to myself because I know that once the kids are up, it's going to be chaos. They're going to want to watch TV and they're going to want to do this and do that. And we're going to be really rushed. So I make sure I get up um, a little bit before and just make sure I get some thinking time and some me time, even if it's just to sit for 10 minutes and have a coffee or something like that. You know, once the kids are awake, it's making sure that they know what's expected of them. So it's a lot of communication, which doesn't always go smoothly with neurodivergent children, because um, especially my son wants to play his Nintendo and he wants to do this, anything but getting ready for school. Right. 